You are listening to Live Free with Rebecca Packard. With this podcast, Rebecca will help spiritual entrepreneurs and mompreneurs experience emotional freedom so that they can create calm and balance in all areas of their life. If you're ready to release your emotional baggage, trauma, and that constant feeling of overwhelm, then you are in the right place. Your journey starts now. Here's your host, Rebecca Packard. Hello, welcome back. I am so happy that you are joining us today on Live Free with Rebecca Packard. Today we have Chris McPeak, and you guys, you know how I love the nicknames in the space of I'm so Scottish, it hurts sometimes. I love it. So when I find another person who's like, I got a Scottish name too, I'm like, yeah, we jive. Um, <laughs> <laughs> those who have been listening know my affinity for all things Gaelic. Um, and I am really excited to bring Chris here to talk to you guys today because she is the multitasker at all ends. Oh my goodness, this lady is doing so many things and touching so many lives in the space of nonprofits and book writing. And she's got podcasts and she's got her community that she's sharing um, how to really show up in that space of your nine to five. And then also, because we all need a little extra these days. That's right. Um, how to create a side hustle, how to like show up and make that a balanced life too. Because I see a lot of people do this. They're like, I work a real job. Well, a side hustle can be a real job, guys. And then they go, but I have a side hustle and these have to be two completely separate worlds. And now I have to spin two more plates on my already chaotic life. And so Chris has like come to the space of balancing that out. Um, she is the author of Making Work Work for You, Elevate Your Eight, and the Nine to Five Side Hustle, a, a guide to balancing your day job with your small business. Like, oh my gosh, every single person in the world needs that right <laughs> now because over 70% of the population has a side hustle, you guys. And a lot of people don't even realize that they have a side hustle. They're like, oh, this is my hobby. Um, well, make your hobby work for you, you guys. You're getting paid either way. You make it a good one, right? Um, and Chris is showing us how to do that. Hello, Chris. Welcome. Oh, Rebecca. It is so exciting to be here. And thank you for having me on your amazing show. Yay! You guys, um, Chris is just in the space of she's put out this book it's already published we're going to be sharing links to it but she's going to be sharing for the next 30 40 minutes with us about how is she keeping her balance in life we get into these spaces where it's kind of like what are we doing <laughs> what are we doing and she's going to share her tips tricks and tools that she's been using that have helped her create that calm, create that ability to do all the things, but to not be a crazy person while doing them, because we didn't start all of these little side things to add more chaos to our lives. They were supposed to be streams of our ability to show up and help other people and like have fun in life, right? Absolutely. So Chris, Hello. introduce yourself, tell everybody who you are and how you're here. I am Chris McPeak. I live in Southern California with my husband, with my hubby and my dog. Um, I have worked for more than 25 years in higher education, mostly in college housing, which if that does not resonate with you, I'm just going to say the word dorm and then you'll know what I did. Um, I did that for about 20 years and then I uh, burned out completely and decided that this dorm shit was, um, can I swear? Is that okay? You can, it's okay. okay. Um, that this dorm shit was sucking the life out of me. So it's time to leave. And I cast the wide net out into the higher education universe and landed this amazing dream job in, um, an advancement, a community college advancement. So that's what I am doing now from eight to four 30. Then in the other space that there is in the day. Um, I have my own show, which is now the nine to five side hustler show. This is the show where I talk to people who are 
legitimately happy in their full-time jobs, but have a side hustle that is either feeding a hobby that they wanted to get paid for or some kind of passion in their life that um, they felt like they needed to do this to live up to their potential. So um, that's the, the podcast. Um, uh, I also run a nonprofit U.S. Masters swim team with my husband. So we're a swim fam, if you will. And um, yeah, I love to knit. I love to swim and I love to binge watch the dark TV um, on evenings and weekends. So yeah, that's me in a nutshell. That's fantastic. I love it. I like to watch the dark TV. Oh. <laughs> I have to be very specific about that because I, it's like, I don't, I can't just turn on the TV and pick something. It's like, oh, this month we're going to dig back into Dexter or we're going to watch the last season of Ozark, which I still haven't seen. So I need to get right. But you got to like you space it out because you're watching it on the weekend. So it takes all month to get it all in. It does. Yeah. (laughs) And I learned a lesson. I'll just, I'm going off topic here, but I learned a really tough lesson. I decided to binge watch all of Breaking Bad in one winter break holiday period. So I watched whatever it was, six and a half, seven seasons in six days (laughs) I highly recommend that one does not do that because I felt at the end of it, I felt like I needed to be committed and my husband was ready to leave me. So it was just, that was not a smart move on my part. Great show, but not, yeah. Let's space that one out over a few months. Yeah. There's a lot happening there. Oh, yeah. 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 It's like maybe don't binge watch Game of Thrones in like four days. Oh my God. Yeah. That's no another- going to end. It's not going to end well for anybody. Everybody no, goes, yeah. it's an emotional roller coaster ride. Yeah, and like, and you, I, and I love that you be- actually bring that up because in the space of all of it, you guys, TV is an emotional roller coaster ride. They are literally it is. in the space of, if they take you on this emotional ride, you have an energetic connection to what they're showing you. You have a chemical response to what they're showing you. And you're like, I'm going for the ride again. I can't wait till it comes back on. That is no lie. I, I get so highly emotionally invested in some of these characters. And I still have not recovered from 24's little mini series. Like I know that Chloe's okay. I do not know if Jack Bauer is okay. And this is not all right with me. This is a huge matter of contention in my life. So um, yeah, if anybody knows, anybody out there knows if Jack Bauer is okay, if he's dead, that's fine. Someone just needs to let me know so I can grieve and then I can move on. Um, Yeah. Huge limbo area for me uh, (laughs) right now. And how many you said it's probably been like seven years since that mini series was out. Anyway, I digress. (laughs) I love it. But it's part of it. It's, there's so many people. So we in the space of weekend watchers are not the norm. The average yeah. person sits down and watches three to eight hours of television a day. I don't know where you're watching eight hours of TV, but cool. Um, and so it's really relevant in the space of where we're talking about creating balance, creating calm, creating that space for that balance in your day your nine to five job and then a side hustle you throw tv in there and that's like a whole nother mix of things because people are so invested in what's going to happen in the episode that they say well i can't i can't actually do my side hustle because i need to show up for this television show and this is like i know people some people are listening going like oh that's not a real thing oh for the love it it really is is. yeah completely is yeah but if we look at what is our emotional connection to these places, where are we allowing them to manipulate it so that we're like, oh, I have to give my time to this space. I'm not going to lie. I love the fact that we haven't done TV for a long time. And one of the things that we are only doing is, and we had gotten into that, like, oh, well, let's get this app and that app and we'll watch here and watch there and we'll jump here. And I'm like, no, 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 no. It's too much like cable, the the, the big C word, you know, yeah. and uh, my husband grew up in a house where they had that and I didn't. And I was like, pick two. That's it. I'm not yeah. paying for 900 of these things. And I don't yeah. care what's on them. The two that we have, we'll or watch the two that we have. Yes. And period like that's it. And so we pick, I let him pick the two. And like, now it's like, sensible, like responsible and we'll go okay this is what we're gonna watch and we do it a lot like you were okay here's one 
whatever it is. And now yeah. we'll watch it and we'll unfold it. And then when it's done, we'll pick a new one, I'm not jumping around all over the place because yeah. you do come to the space of like, okay, where is that? Where did I pencil in that time for television? Yes. And yes, television is relaxing, but it's not because oh. it's mm-hmm. actually emotionally charged. So uh, with you, you're working your nine to five, you're doing your side hustle, you're fitting it in, but you recognize the space of like, sometimes you're like, I'm off the wagon. Yeah, <laughs> it's so true. Binge watch all the things. Yeah. Um, but how do you pull yourself back from that? I, I think it's a matter of figuring out priorities and being accountable to them. So before let me run you through the history. So back in the day, I was a classic theater jumper. I went to movies every weekend. That was what I did. I would go alone. I would go with my girlfriends. We would, you know, look at the Chicago reader or wherever I was living, you know, the newspaper and look at what was playing where, and we're going to see two or three and we're going to, we're going to mark it out. And I did that for years. Um, then, so that was, you know, that was my weekend stuff and watch TV at night after work. Then when I moved to Southern California, I, um, my sister asked me to do team and training with her. And so I joined team and training. I'm going to raise money, for lung cancer or yeah, cancer. And then I'm going to, um, I'm going to run a marathon. So when you're training for a marathon, it's taking up a lot of your weekends. So I was still seeing movies, but I wasn't seeing movies to that extent. Um, and then I became a podcaster and of course I broke my foot around the same time, but that's neither here nor there. I became a podcaster and started writing books And that was taking up time too. So what I, what I'm learning about myself is that even though I completely view my side hustle as a a job, a vocation um, where I'm, you know, working to earn money from it, it's also what is taking up the time that used to be filled with going to the movie theater nonstop and then training for these races. I might train for a race again someday. Um, I don't know, but, but I might not. And, and then of course, when we started the swim team, same thing, like, weekends would be, if there was a swim meet in a weekend. Well, that's all day Saturday or all day Sunday. And depending if it's a Saturday meet, we're more than likely recuperating on Sunday. Um, Cause there's, those are long days and they're exhausting, although they're, they're fantastic. So I think that when part of this, I think is moving through the ages too, because when I was, when I was younger and I wasn't thinking about like hobbies were hobbies were different and it was pretty much all movies. Um, and so I think as I, as I get older, those things are, are less important to me, but investing my time in something that feels like I'm making additional contributions to the world. And so I, again, I don't know if that's an age thing or that's just where my mindset is now, but um, yeah, if I want to binge watch something on television or, you know, check into a new show, It's going to be on a weekend where I don't have any other commitments and I'm probably only going to do two or three hours at a time, as opposed to, you know, the story I told earlier, like I literally took a whole week out of my life to watch all of Breaking Bad and I did, I did nothing else, but maybe eat and, and bathe every other day. Um, that, you know, that's not healthy behavior. And at the place that I am in my life now, it, it has to really be about, um, choosing things that are a little, a little bit more healthy. So I have to separate myself from the emotional connection or at least give myself a buffer. So yeah, it's going to be three episodes today and that's it. And then we're going to go do laundry. We're going to go W A L K the, the dog, or, you know, go grab some Chinese food, something like that. But um, yeah, I don't know if that completely answered your question, but uh, it does. It does. Because I think a lot of people in the world of where TV has kind of taken over households. Mm -hmm. It is pride of place on the mantle for 90% of homes. It's in that spot where it's the center of the room. It's the focal point of most rooms. And a lot of people, um, I I don't know about you, but I find that I'm, um, (laughs) I'm like a unicorn. Uh, We only have one. Oh, wow. That's Um, awesome. There's only one. It's in the living room. There's not one in my kitchen. There's not one in my kids' room. I don't have one in the basement. There's surely not one in my bedroom. Yeah. Um, and like, that's like an anomaly these days because mm-hmm. they are everywhere. 
Mm-hmm. But when we look at the average household has four yeah. these days. Yeah. And so you made a really good point in the space of I am choosing. Mm-hmm. I'm choosing where I spend my time. I'm choosing what's filling my space. And a really another great point you make is how can I show up and touch the world outside of my home? Yes. Guys, we're a community. Yeah. We- and, you know, I, sorry to interrupt, but that's such a huge, a huge point in the state of where everything is happening right now where, you know, there's so much division, there's so much lack of understanding, there's so much misinformation and the focus on, well, I'm just going to take care of number one and that's it. And we can't, we can't do that anymore. It's, it's not going to, it's going to sound really, I don't know, hedonistic or something, but it's not going to perpetuate the species. And we're at risk of our whole way of life as Americans. Um, going down the toilet if we don't pay more attention to these types of things. Um, Cause mm-hmm. there's just entirely too many, um, there's too much negativity out there to not embrace the, the positive. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Well, absolutely. And when we shut ourselves in to binge watch programs that mm-hmm. don't support the bigger picture of that unity and connection. And it has that undertone of negativity or that sleight of hand of a jab here and a jab here of different things. Your conscious and unconscious are reacting, whether we believe that or not, even though people show up in the space of I'm going to watch this and I'm going to relax. There are other ways that we can relax. There are new ways that are really actually like really old ways. I'm really old ways. That yeah. There. We're like, we're like, <laughs> it's so new. It's such a fad. No, it's not. It's like centuries old. We yeah. just catch them back up with it. Cause it's coming on the loop again. Cause they're yeah. going really, let's try this again, guys. <laughs> Remember yeah. it works everything so good. Comes back, everything right. comes back in style after a while. Exactly. So in the space of that, what are in, when you were like, okay, I'm balancing the things out. I'm decreasing my TV time. I'm giving myself limits. I'm, figuring out a new way to roll because I'm living in a more space of being conscious and aware of yeah. where my energy goes, <laughs> my attention flows, my energy goes and my emotional self connects in that space. Right. Cause yeah. that's not real. pretend it's a real life thing. Yeah. Um, what were some of the things that you decided? Okay. Well, I, I need to have a morning routine or I'm gonna, how am I going to chill myself out? What are some of the tools that you're using that are helping you support that space of bringing calm without needing to get clickery? Yeah. Yeah. That's a great question. So that whole morning routine thing goes back to even when I was still just running before I was podcasting. And I think I picked up I picked up the no meat athlete, uh, Brock black Friday bundle. And there was a program in there. I can't remember the guy's name, but it was very reminiscent of the Hal Elrod morning miracle concept. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, I'm going to get up at five. I'm going to engage in these, you know, four or five, um, activities and, you know, dominate, dominate my day before I eat my breakfast. Um, and after that, I just, I absorbed all of the things about morning routines and I was already, you know, either running several miles a day or going to the gym. So I, I modified my morning routine to not include activity because it was going to be included anyway, but I adopted meditation. I adopted journaling. I adopted trying to read a little bit before I went to work. Um, I do all these things before I go do my workout work out, come back and shower and, and head to the office. And then when I, when I, when we started the swim team, I, I was like, I can't, I can't necessarily do swim team related things at the day job. So I'm going to carve a couple hours during the week to make that stuff happen. And then from swim team came book and then came podcast and then came other book and all the other things just started snowballing. But I, I wanted that. And so with wanting that, it became priority. So my morning routine then will usually consist of about a half an hour of doing, you know, 
wellness related stuff for myself, meditation, journaling, reading, and then maybe a half hour will be dedicated to my business. Do I need to quickly go in and post on LinkedIn about my, this week's episode, or do I need to make a couple graphics from Canva to go into my Instagram queue, do that stuff, and then pack the swim bag and go to the pool. So that whole piece has um, sort of metamorphosized as my life has changed. Um, and my priorities have changed. So yeah, I still love going to movies, but it, 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 right now it's not as important as putting my energy into the swim team, getting my own swimming in, making sure that I'm reading something that's, that's, you know, fulfilling my life and my knowledge and those types of things. And then I even include my commute in my morning routine, because that's where I, I listen to my very small bit of news and a podcast or an audiobook. So before I've even, you know, uh, check my time card, if you will, I've already sort of invested a whole bunch of time in myself for the day. So whether it's business time or whether it's me time, that's the morning. And then after work, it's a lot more working on some aspect of, of the two businesses. And then, um, I go to bed at eight cause we get up at four and the whole elevate your eight philosophy is if you're honoring your, work-life balance and you're working eight hours a day and then you're getting eight hours of sleep at night for your wellness, then the real key to your productivity and time management is what you do in those other eight hours. That's why morning routines and evening routines and prioritization and planners and all that type of stuff are so important, depending on what floats your boat in terms of what you think you can commit to. Um, I know some people will never use a planner because it's not it doesn't gel with the way that they think, but they might have a huge wall of post-it notes that have all their action items on it. And when they complete an action item, the post-it note comes down or, or whatever. But I think it's boiled down to me with finding a morning routine that works, that, that fuels my spirit and my motivation. And then prioritizing scheduling those other things. Um, Wednesday nights are, are swim team nights where we will balance the the bank budget. We put out the signups for swimming. We put out the coaching schedule, those types of things. And then Tuesday evenings are where I, you know, prepare my email for my newsletter, those types of stuff. So I have that down to a very comfortable routine that works for me. And if on a weekend I get, <clears throat> if on a weekend I get ahead of the game, fantastic. Now I can watch a emotionally charged show for an hour, or I can take, you know, who for a longer W A L K. So those, those types of things work themselves in because I have already said, these are the things that are important to me. And this is the time of day that I'm doing them. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> that's the other thing, like you made a good point in the space of, I think a lot of times people will say, well, I can't do it because I don't have the time. I hate but that. You have the time, but you haven't transferred your schedule to a visible, tangible place yep. to be able to see where you're selling your time. Mm -hmm. We all have 24 hours in the day. We all have certain commitments. And yeah. I think one of the most eye-opening things for me was when I made that in my head and then I was like well I do it digital it's fine I do it digital I do it digital and then I finally was like I got my pen and paper out like <laughs> I live by this thing if I lose this I'm screwed over, so if you yeah. ever see me wandering around looking for my black book help me out y'all um yeah. <laughs> but when you make it tangible and like mine's color coded I got the blocks the colors are I got work I got family, I got this, I got that. Everything's like in a space where boom, if I look at it, I know it, I see it, yeah. it's there. But you know what? I think people think, oh, you have to have that overnight. I don't know about you. It's taken me six years to come to this space where everything's in one yeah. book, where yeah. everything's in one space, where I'm easily able to unroll that and unwrap that. And I'm sure for you, it was trial and error trial and error. Let me try this. Oh, that didn't work. Let me try yeah. that. That didn't work. Yeah. Or I'll yeah, exactly. This from this person and this from this person, but their whole system doesn't work for me. And that surely ain't working for yeah. me. Yeah. And no one's going to go from having zero mor morning routine to having a, a, an hour long with all of the things in it. Like I tried 10 minutes of visualization 
per the Hal Elrod thing that didn't work for me. So, okay, that's, that's getting kicked out. And now I'm going to add 10 minutes to reading, or I'm going to add additional five minutes to meditation, something like that. Mm-hmm. And again, it's, it's just tweaking this, tweaking your idea of your schedule by five or 10 minutes, maybe every other week, every week until you find something that works for you. And it does require commitment. It does require paying attention to like what you said, the things that, that gel with you and, and feel right. Um, because real change takes time and we're not just going to wake up the next day and be transformed. Like, uh, you don't manifest weight loss. You have to work at it. And, and same thing with, with this type of stuff and developing the way that you're going to be more intentional and, uh, yeah, more intentional on how and how you're using that time and how you're showing up in the world. Yeah. And some days you don't. Some days you just throw your hands up and go, no, not yeah, today. Not gonna happen. But that doesn't mean that it has to stop forever. So right. you have a day where you're like, right? Yeah. It, it's fine. It's, yeah. I call those cheat days, right? Like people in the space of like eat, like strict eating habit, they're like, I have a cheat day. I, whatever I want, but that's because I'm stubborn. But. <laughs> Well, and the reason that those people are successful in weight loss is that they have the cheat day and they go back to the original routine the next day. To begin with. Yeah. And the whole concept of, um, I, her name's Allison Lewis, and she created this planner. It's called the seven minute life. And her thing is that every day is a clean slate. So if you didn't get everything done on Monday that you wanted to do, Tuesday's a new day and just insert that one or two things that you missed in there. And if those don't get done, that's fine too. Like don't put so much pressure on yourself that you have to be up until midnight because everything on the list has to be done because you have to be able to check it off in the box. Checking off boxes is great, but um, allowing yourself some grace and some relaxation. Grace, mental health, sanity. Uh Sleep. Those are better. <laughs> those are all super important. Yeah. One of the things that I love is um, that space of like, I was up till four o'clock in the morning trying to get things done. And I've never been that person. Like yeah. I am like, let's get the things done. But I'm also like, oh, no, I like to sleep a lot. Like yeah. it's my favorite hobby. Um, so <laughs> that's one of those things I've not been, uh, let me do that or try that. But at the same time, we are so hard on ourselves as humans yeah. and our expectations of if it's not perfect, it can't be. And we judge ourselves for not having that perfection. What's one of the things that you've done in your life to overcome that so that you've been able to just be like, you know what? I'm showing up like here I am game yeah. face on. <laughs> there were two different quotes that I'm sure weren't weren't originated by these two people, but I read one of Kathy Freston's book. Um, she's a, a vegan advocate and so, and her thing was progress, not perfection. And I really, I like that idea because it's the small tweaks, you know, one thing at a time until you're in a place where you feel comfortable. And then the other thing, um, Allison Melody in the mastermind group that she leads, she would say, no, that, was, that wasn't her. It was Jenna. Jenna Kutcher is the one that, that was saying done is better than perfect. Um, and I love both of those uh, mantras because it's, yeah, it's just the way to move forward until something feels right and then put it out into the world. Because if you have perfection anywhere, you have no place to grow or develop. And I refuse to think that I'm done um, working on myself in this world, even if I'm 98 and feel like I've lived a pretty good life, I'm still going to want to learn stuff and, and read and explore. And um, I, I'd be hard pressed to see that I'd be a person that would just say, okay, I've learned everything there is possibly to know. Now, you know, life come happen to me or whatever. And I just, that's just not, that's not real. So those, those two concepts, I think have been good drivers to put me in a place of yeah, that this is finished and I'm pretty happy with where it is. So now I would like to move to the next thing. Right. I love that. I love that. That's not real. Exactly. You guys, it's not, (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. it's just not. So in the space of like, uh, one of your must do can't skip, have to do it. Self-care things. What's your go-to? 
Um, ah, that's a really good question. I suppose I feel, I feel imbalanced if I have not done some sort of meditation in the day. So if I, if I miss it in the morning, I'm going to do something at night to, to wind down the day. But I also, um, I do like my planner very much and, um, I've kicked around a lot of different planner concepts. So my, my 2021 project, I'll just mention this in passing. Um, I'm using four different planners for the four quarters because I want to investigate and see which one is really the best one for me. So Mm -hmm. right now I'm using goal crazy and I'm, you know, two days in, (laughs) so I can't really say, but so far so good. Like I like being able to open that book and take a look at where I'm at for that day and say, yes, this is all making sense. And I achieved the things that I wanted to do today. So I think between meditation and keeping up with the concept of the planner, which is part journal too. Um, I say, I would not, I would not feel like the day is complete if I weren't engaging in one of those things. I love it. I love it. Those are two things I like, I got to write in my, because it it is, I've started to have that space of mix all the planners that I've tried together and like, okay, so, because I don't want to have 900 notebooks. I am I'm real good at that. I have like all these half written in notebooks and I'm like, no, I'm not doing myself any service and I'm not doing the trees any service. Like enough. It's so So true. Bringing it back to one place where I have like, here's my day. Here's my little tidbit. Here's maybe notes that I've listened to a podcast or I've had been in a training or I've had something and I'm like, let me put my notes in. And it makes it nice. Cause I can be like, Oh, let me go back to such and such day. What was that? Yeah. And then meditation, meditation yeah. is key. I think that um, the space of finding those things that work for you Sure. You don't have to do what we do. You don't have to do what somebody else does. There's yeah. 9 million different things you could be doing, but finding the things that are the staple in helping you have your best day that supports you in your best day. I think that's really key. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to start to wrap up in the, get ourselves into the space of saying goodbye to Chris even though we love talking I could talk to you all day um but (laughs) if you were to leave this space what is the absolute one thing you need people to know to live each day in balance to live each day free to just show up in the world as their best selves what's the one thing you need to just be like guys you've got to hear this it's up to you. You have to choose. You have to hold yourself accountable. You have to go do the thing. Um, You can't put that on somebody else because it's not their responsibility. So I think, and and plus you can't let other people dictate to you what you should like or not like or do or not do. Um, So yeah, just get up, feel the day and then go do it. But remember that you're you're, you are driving the train on this one. You are, you are running the meeting. You are, um, facilitating the conversation that is your life and your place. So, um, yeah, you make the choice and then go do it. So true. It's your personal power, people. It's your personal power. Own it. Own who you are. Right. Love it. Yes. Um, this has been wonderful. You guys, yes, we're yeah. going to be sharing um, Chris's social media links and the links to her books and um, to her upcoming uh, her podcast in the space of her podcast is now the nine to five side hustler show. Um, and we'll be sharing all those links in the description. So don't forget to check that out so you can connect more with her and see how she's touching lives. This is um, really amazing because she does work in the space of nonprofit. She's touching a lot of young people's lives through her swim team and showing up in the world. And with her podcast, teaching people 
how to just create that balance because it doesn't have to be hard. We human things so hard. It's like my go-to, like, I think that's going to be my new hashtag in life is because I've been saying it so much and I've really been saying it in 2020, but we human things so hard and we don't have to. That's an old paradigm. It's an old story. We really don't have to. If we all show up in that space of, wow, what can I do to make things better in this moment? everybody wins right um so yeah um so it's been lovely having you chris thank you for sharing this time with us and um thank you everyone for showing up don't forget if you do comment share like um we do respond we do answer your questions so feel free to leave that in the chat below also and we will talk to you again soon thanks everybody Well, hey there. Thanks for listening to today's episode. We would love it if you would leave us a rating and review in your favorite podcast player. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode.